here. Get it out. Richmond, baby. What's going on, everybody? How are y'all doing? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so, my one month training with Swift has now concluded. I've finished it, I've completed it. Uh, it is all over with. I got a lot to share with you guys. I got a lot to uh, talk about. So, um, over this past month, I had a lot of um, neat things that I had to learn and a lot of stuff that I had to experience to kind of get me prepared to drive it on my own. I want to share that information with you. Um, I want to go over some of the places that I visited, some of the things that I've, I've encountered over the road. Um, I want to talk to y'all about how drivers treat Swift drivers when you're out there. It's crazy how they think they can just disrespect us because we got a Swift trailer. I want to talk to y'all about all of that. Um, I had a lot of things that I encountered that, you know, uh, was pretty dangerous. But lo and behold, I finished the training. I was able to complete it. And I have my own truck. And right now I'm just on home time. So I'm enjoying my family. But uh, definitely excited about this new journey as far as moving forward. I actually had the experience of delivering a load, two loads on my own on my way home. So, uh, you know, I want to kind of talk about that. So just want to go over everything that I, you know, was able to experience a lot that I learned and just kind of keep you guys updated. Like I said, like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about where I am right now. I'm so excited about finally finishing and uh, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to my future with Swift. So let's get right into it. So, like I said, I finally finished my one-month training with uh, Swift uh, on the June 21st. I shipped out uh, and met my driver trainer. I think it was the 21st or the 22nd of June. I uh, shipped out to Richmond, Virginia. I met my driver trainer where we immediately got on the road and we made our first run. Uh, my first run was from South Carolina to Texas and that entire trip I drove. I drove the entire trip. It took us about two days, I think. Um, you only got about 10 hours to drive. I think we made several stops. So it took us about two days to get there um, based off of the amount of time that we had to drive per DOT uh, uh, requirements. And then immediately we picked up our second load and took it to Arizona. Over this whole fur, over the whole month of training, for the most part, you'll be driving, you'll be doing most of the driving. The last week of training, we did a team run. We started team driving. And what that is, is where both of you will drive. I drove during the daytime. My driver trainer, he drove during the nighttime. And we, we left South Carolina. We picked up a load in South Carolina and we took it all the way to California. That took us about two and a half days with both of us teaming 10 hours a day. And we also got back to the East Coast by teaming um, on another load from California, bringing it back to South Carolina, where my training had, where I had finished my training. At the end of the training, you will need to complete a drive, uh, a driver test, a driving test, and a 56 question, uh, multiple question test. Nothing hard, nothing to sweat about, but you will need to. Uh, Kind of study your macros a little bit. Know what's, what what all your macros are uh, used for, um, and a, a few other things that we actually didn't talk about. But it's common sense. When you read the questions, it's nothing to worry about. Like I said, so don't worry too much about it. It's pretty pretty simple. I do believe if you fail the test, they give you a chance to retake it or give you a few minutes to kind of do it. I, I'm not sure how it goes. I passed it the first time. I think I missed eight eight questions. You can miss a total of thirteen. 56 questions so no big deal um for the most part during this whole training i did most of the driving uh we went from south carolina we drove to texas to arizona california we drove to utah uh, oklahoma colorado we've been all over the map delivering loads picking up loads uh several times we had to do uh we had to sit a while um, and wait for you know the appointment time so there's days that we had to actually sit and wait for the appointment because there was a solid appointment for us to deliver that load um one thing i found out is if you deliver a load early then they can actually um you know you can get in trouble for delivering a load early um too early because they have that time cut out for you specifically they have so many shippers and uh coming in delivering freight 
you know, you can't just show up with freight at, at any time you want to because they won't be able to get you in. It's all scheduled. So um, something to note um, that you'll obviously learn as you go on that some if you have a specific time to deliver it, make sure you deliver it too long um, on a specific time. Uh, so you don't have to worry about getting in trouble or getting fined or whatever they do. Also, same with being late. If you're late for a load, they, they can't fit you in the schedule. You'll have to reschedule, and that can mess up all kind of your driving um, time and your driving miles for the week. If you, you know being paid by per mile, you want to be able to get this load there on time, get it there when it's supposed to be there, get unloaded, and move on to your next load. If you get if you're late and they have to turn you around, then you have to reschedule. Sometimes they reschedule you for two, two and three days. Sometimes they might have to reschedule you for a week and you have to turn around and you know if there's a terminal close enough you can t call it to a terminal and get on your next load but who knows if it's too far away you just burn in miles to drop a load off to try to get on another load because you know it, it can mess up so many things so you want to make sure you're delivering your freight on time to these shippers don't be early too early don't be too late and everything will go just fine so first thing, being out on the road with somebody that you barely know, somebody brand new that you just meeting, um, that could be a stressful thing to think about. You know, who are you going to be in the truck sleeping with? You know, you, you're in this truck for a whole month. Um, it's a small space. You got to hope that this person is clean and sanitary. You got to hope that, you know, um, that you can get along with them. Thankfully, my driver trainer was basically he was my age we, we we had a whole lot in common and we was able to get along well we bumped heads a little bit but um i just think that just come along with just spending so much time with somebody in, in the truck for for that amount of time but for the most part we got along um and now that i'm on my own i, I had already delivered two loads and i was able to reach out to him and he's right there he answered the phone every time and just kind of help out so you know you want to you know hopefully you find somebody that you can get along with now if you end up with somebody that you just can't get along with maybe they are not teaching you and they're not showing you the ropes so uh, you feel like they're not giving you the proper um, information that you need you can request to get another driver trainer now if you end up getting another driver trainer from my understanding that you have to start your, your uh, whole month over so um, hopefully you find somebody that you can get along with and that you know you can be around for that amount of time but being around being out there for a month you can't tie you you get tired of you know you 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 want to it's hard being around somebody for that amount of time and you, you know you 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 know you don't bump heads with them so like i said i i we we started bumping heads because i felt like i needed to start learning this stuff on my own i didn't need you in my ear every time something goes wrong or something you know every time something happened you 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 yeah you want somebody who can correct you in a sense but some situations you really just need to get put into and you can get you know you want to see how you get out of them and i told him i said hey you know if i'm backing up and i get into a crunch let me fix it let me see if i can fix it if i can't fix it or if you know something you know you know, I'm having a hard time and you, you notice that I'm struggling. If I ask for help, great. Or if you see me struggling, feel free to reach in. But give me the opportunity to try to correct what I'm doing first. And that kind of helped us out. That helped me a lot. Hel helped me out a lot because, you know, there's certain situations that I got into. I was able to get out, get myself out of. And then there were cert certain situations where I got myself into. And then it started taking a little bit too extra time. And he was able to jump in and say, hey, look do this, do this. This is what you did wrong. This is what you need to do. So, um, like I said, we had a good chemistry. We was able to get along and that made that whole time actually go by, you know, a lot better. I was able to deal with that. So that was cool. Okay. So let's talk about some of the stuff that I had to encounter while driving on the expressway or pulling up to these truck stops. These drivers out here, absolutely. Do not like Swift for whatever reason. I don't even understand how they get the the name that they got, but um, or the rap that they they have in, in in the industry or whatever. But you see so much crap on social media about Swift drivers, you know, or the worst drivers. Or, um, you know, they had the most accidents. Now, Swift is the largest trucking company in the United States. 
is by far the biggest. They have the most trucks and the most trailers. So by that alone, you know, they have kind of this target on their back because they hire a lot of new drivers. They got a lot of drivers coming in weekly to the point to where, like I said, they didn't even have enough driver trainers. When I got out, I had to get coded at a whole nother drive, uh, terminal because they didn't have enough trainers in my area um, for me to go out. So they have a ton of driver train, um, a ton of uh, uh, drivers. With that being said, that alone, you're probably gonna have a little bit more accidents. However, you know, everything that happens out on the road is not swift. You can see somebody get into a crunch that clearly is not swift, and they go, well, hey, you know, must be a swift driver. Clearly, it got a whole nother company on the side of the trailer, but, you know, must have learned how to drive at swift. One of the things to note, um, Swift Swift trucks is topped off at 65 miles per hour. You get trucks flying by us all the time. Every time they fly by us, they're looking over at us crazy like uh, they'll jump right in front of you. They even brake check you. We got cameras on our truck and every time something happens, that camera goes off and it could go against your uh, safety score. Now, you have to do things to prevent, you know, getting into accidents like if somebody cut in front of you too close you want to back off of them you don't want that camera to go off because what happens is that if it goes off the uh the uh, driver leaders back at the office or back at the terminals they could review that camera see what happened see if you actually responded to to that car jumping in front of you or that truck jump, jumping in front of you they want to see if you actually um, apply brake pressure. They can tell how much brake pressure, they can tell how fast you are, they can tell you where you're at. Um, every single thing that happens, they can tell you what happened. And, you know, sometimes they'll look at the camera and say, okay, it wasn't his fault. They can, um, and they can get rid of it, they can throw it out. Sometimes, you know, if a truck jump in front of you and you don't respond quick enough or you don't react to that, then that goes against your safety score. So many points, they fire you. Um, or you, you, you can just uh, simply lose out on your safety bonus. But because of that alone, you got drivers out there who think that you're tripping on the road. Um, you know, if you're braking because somebody's cutting in front of you, the driver behind you don't like it. They jump, and jump on the side of you and they cut right in front of you because you're braking, you're slowing down because you don't want this camera to go off. So they'll jump right in front of you, brake check you because you slow down and brake. They feel like you brake checking them and, and that's actually not what's happening. So, I mean, that's some of the dangerous things that happens on the road. I mean, it's just a lot of things that you want to make sure that you're staying aware of when you're out there driving on the road. You want to make sure you be safe. You want to fall within those guidelines that Swift set for you so you can get your safety bonus, but you also want to keep your head on the swivel and make sure that you're not just, you know, um, you're not doing anything intentional to lose your uh, safety bonus or cut drivers off. You definitely don't want to get into a back and forth with a driver out there on the road. You know, somebody cut you off and then, you know, you try to do the same thing to them, pass them. You know, you want to kind of just let it go. Do whatever you can and let it go because now you're in a situation, you're driving an 80,000 pound weapon to say the least. You don't want to get into a situation where you start, you know, trying to run somebody down and then you get in a situation where now something else has happened and you can't respond quick enough because your truck is too heavy or you can't swerve, you, you, you know, any kind of crazy maneuvers, that camera will go off because, you know, you can tip that truck over. So, I mean, these drivers out here, like I said, they really do not respect Swift drivers. But you want to try to do whatever you can to stay safe out there on this road. When you pull up to these truck stops, everybody is looking. All the truckers in the, in the truck stop, they're looking. They want to see what you're finna do. They finna see if they can make another video of a Swift driver doing something stupid or making a mistake. You're in training. Your driver leader will be there. He'll be helping you out if you need help. Uh, the first, like I said, the first week, my driver trainer actually got out of the truck and he he helped me back up. So when I was backing up. He get out in the truck and as I'm backing in, you know, he would give me the hand signals on which way to turn the wheel, if I needed to turn it more, bend the, bend the trailer more, uh, straighten up the trailer, pull up, um, you know, uh, get out of the bend uh, so you can get that trailer into the, to the slot. 
after about a week, week and a half, I, I pretty much was on my own with that. I was able to, you know, get it in and get it out with no problem. But those drivers, you know, they looking like, you know, they got something else. You know, they, they looking to see if they can create another video. Now, one thing I noticed that while I was sitting at the truck, truck stops, I would sit there and I started watching drivers. And I'm telling you, these drivers out here have the absolute... I don't know who taught them how to drive because most of them can't drive. They can't back up. Backing up a 53 foot trailer, it's gonna take some time to learn how to do that. And I'm telling you, all these truckers out here, all these companies, no matter how, how much experience they have, I've seen these truckers jackknifing in the middle of the parking lot. They trying to turn their trailers around. Um, you know, they kind of, you know, they try to um, uh, back up from the blind side. You know, I try to avoid that if I can. Um, I think I had to do it one time, um, um, backing in from the blind side. But for the most part, man, you see so much stuff. And, you know, all these truckers out here have a hard time backing up. They all have, you know, I've even seen people hit other trucks while they've been out there. I'm in my swift truck and I'm, I'm looking like, you know, now what you know it's not a swift driver this is somebody else getting in an accident so you definitely want to just try to make sure that you're doing what you got to do stay focused you know what you're doing keep focused and i think everything will be all right so despite everything that you'll encounter on the road as long as you're being safe and you're reacting to the craziness that's happening out on the road you'll be fine just stay focused do what you got to do and everything will work itself out swift is a really good company if you're just getting into the business and you want to learn the right way you're going to get put with a driver trainer you're going to go out for a month and you're going to learn all the ins and outs of being out on the road you're going to learn stuff that you know it's gonna be hard to learn by yourself um, you don't you 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 want to have somebody who can kind of help direct you when you get into trouble you want to have somebody there who can answer questions if you need some questions answered um, or who's going to prevent you from getting into something that's just going to be a complete disaster you want to have somebody there that's training you the right way who's there to answer any questions who's there to look over anything that you're doing so that you can be trained the right way you want to be out there with somebody who knows what they're doing you don't want to be riding through the mountains and never having training you want to be with somebody who can show you how to lock the thing in the gears what you need to do to keep the vehicle the, uh, the uh, truck at a certain speed you want to know how to maneuver on you know out here on these roadways so like I said Swift is going to train you the right way. They're going to put you with somebody. They're going to train you the right way. And at minimum, even if you plan on getting with Swift and, you know, moving on, you know, whatever you plan to do with Swift, if you decide to come on board, you're going to get good training. You know, who knows where I'll be in the next six months, next year, you know, heck, next three months. Who knows where I'll end up, you know. But the good thing is I had the opportunity I have the opportunity now to learn as much as possible. So when I do move on, I can say I got some experience, I understand certain things, and I've experienced certain things to where I know what to do if I got into a certain situation. So that's the good thing about it is that you're gonna get some good training and you're gonna have the opportunity to learn the right way. Overall, my overall experience with my training was it was it was good it was a good experience i learned a lot i experienced a lot i visited a lot of uh, nice places um places that i never thought i'd be had the opportunity to uh, visit it's when it comes to driving um i've been all through the mountains now where things start to get interesting was when it was time for me to get home time once i completed my training and i got my truck i received my truck um now it's time for me to go home. I need to go home and reset. I'm, I haven't seen my wife and kids in a month. And, you know, I felt like it was time, you know, in order to get me home, they had to find a load, you know, headed my way so they wouldn't just burn gas by just allowing me to just drive the truck home. I had to deliver two loads and that took me, that took me an extra four days 
before I actually got home because I had to deliver a load and then I had to pick up and I had to take one load from South Carolina to Atlanta then I had to pick up the load and then it took me two days to deliver the next load I ended up delivering the load um, Friday which was yesterday I ended up del delivering the load and you know then I was able to come home which cut my drive my home time down from I think five days down to four or three days or something like that but my point is you know when it's time for you to get home you're gonna run into all kind of crap as far as getting you home and so you can see your family now my my normal uh i guess driving schedule based off of what my driver leader was explaining was you're driving two weeks you're home two days they try to get you about 22 to 25 mile 100 miles a week so you can actually make a paycheck which i think is pretty good but in order to get you home they're going to need to find a load headed back your way and depending on what freight looked like based off of what she was saying freight is like based off of what freight looked like they may not be able to get you home immediately and you might have you you may be sitting around waiting for a load to get you close by where you, where you live at so you can take home time you know that's one of those things that you know i you know i, I understand but i kind of don't agree with because hey if i'm out here for two weeks two and a half weeks delivering freight it's time for me to go home i don't care nothing about gas mileage i need to get home to my family i'm only gonna be able to see them a couple days before i'm back out here again running running freight so that's one of those things where you just kind of have to you know stay on top of you know make sure that you're letting them know what's important to you make sure that you stand in your ground when it's when when you tell them hey it's time to go home make sure they understand that so you can get home you know don't just allow them to just have you sitting around waiting you know and whatever it takes you know just do what you got to do but you know make sure you do it respectfully you don't want to just you know you know you don't want to obviously lose your job or nothing like that um but you know what's important is that you get your home time and that they respect that so that's the main thing um like I said, it took me a couple extra days to get home, which I didn't like, but I, I made it. And I'm here to share all this information with you guys. Like I said, um, uh, I drive, I, I, I go back out next week. I want to say Tuesday. So I'll be leaving back out. I'll be out for two weeks and um, I will be able to create more content when i'm out there i think I, what i'll do uh is as i'm going through some of these deliveries as i'm making my drops i'll do a little bit more recording um i wasn't able to do as much um during this training because you know you want to make sure you're learning and you want to make sure you are giving your driver leader his un your undivided attention so it's kind of kind of hard to have a camera while you're learning and you know shooting and stuff like that i got a couple clips but for the most part you know you know I, I just didn't want to do too much but now that I have my own truck um, I'm definitely going to give you guys a walk around of what my truck looks like and I'm also gonna kind of do a little bit more shooting as I'm out in the truck just kind of give you guys a, a, a real um, a visual of what it's like being out there so you guys can see what it's like to be out here on the road but um, again I just want to thank you guys for continuing to, to uh, follow my journey and tune in to uh, my videos that I'm putting out um, this is a new channel so I'm trying to grow it if you know anybody looking to get into the trucking industry please send them to my channel uh, let them know that I got some information and as I continue to go along with this journey with Swift or wherever I end up um, I want you guys I want to be able to provide you guys with all the information that you need that will help you make the right decision and uh, will you know ultimately help you is making a decision on if this is even the uh, right field or right industry for you to be in so again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time I look to see you again thanks <laughs>